in South Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I ask for unanimous consent to submit two reports from the George W. Bush Institute of February 2024, the captured state on human cost and on uh, corruption. Objection so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And indeed, generals, we, we appreciate your service. And, uh, but we just have to learn from uh, what's occurred, the appeasement uh, in Afghanistan. The Biden decision to appease is the worst foreign policy national security decision, I believe, in the history of the United States. It led directly to the encouragement of dictators who are ruling by gun to invade the democracies of rule of law. We saw that on February 22, 2022, when war criminal Putin invaded Ukraine. We saw that on October 7, 2023, when the regime in Tehran, through their puppets of Hamas, invaded uh, Israel. We see it today as the world's largest military buildup is being conducted by the Chinese Communist Party to threaten Taiwan. The global war on terrorism continues, and indeed with open borders, the American families have never been at greater risk of attack. And I especially appreciate uh, the military families who are here today. Uh, as a 31-year veteran of the 218th Infantry Brigade, I visited four times with our personnel, uh, with the Adjutant General Bob Livingston, our troops serving in Afghanistan, and I saw them serve with their Afghan brothers, just as you, just as you did. And due to encouragement by my wife, I'm particularly grateful my oldest son, Alan, received a CAB in uh, Iraq, my second son, a doctor at Baghdad International Airport, my third uh, served at the southern border and also served in uh, Egypt, and my youngest son served uh, under your command a year uh, in Afghanistan. And to me, uh, the Biden decision uh, that led to the 13 deaths of the uh, persons at Abbey Gate, the service members, is just inexcusable. And I actually felt uh, assured, generals, knowing that uh, your competence and capability, particularly a Citadel graduate, uh, but I am very concerned that uh, you were blamed on uh, August the 26th, 2021, by Mr. Biden. He specifically said that the 13 murder, the uh, withdrawal of uh, forces, was uh, a decision uh, as determined by the military, and he said he had letters that indicated that um, you had said that uh, there should be a, a, an immediate appeasement. Uh, I sent a letter that day to the president asking for copies of the letters, and uh, every couple of months I'll send copy, uh, another request. It has not been provided. And so uh, there are no letters. And uh, it's the responsibility of the president of the United States, his decision uh, that resulted in uh, what occurred of uh, putting American families at risk. With that, and indeed the Doha agreement, uh, each of you, uh, was there uh, a violation? It was conditions-based, and weren't, uh, were there violations by uh, the Taliban of the agreement? I'll let John McKenzie give the specifics, but yes, the Taliban violated every condition of the agreement except lethal attacks on U.S. forces from the time they signed the agreement all the way to the end. Uh, so uh, yes, they were in violation. They, they didn't renounce al-Qaeda. Uh, they didn't do Afghan to Afghan negotiations. Uh, they didn't, uh, there's a whole series of conditions in the Doha agreement that they didn't do. No, that's correct. Every, every, every condition except the, the one, the one narrow condition about attacks on U.S. and coalition forces. Uh, and in particular, actually, they stepped up intensely attacks on Afghan forces during this period because we had agreed to actually withdraw substantive air combat support from the Afghan military during this period of time, and they took advantage of that opportunity. And, and I appreciate that uh, President Donald Trump has indicated it was conditions-based. The conditions were violated, uh, and that would have led uh, to his view of maintaining the uh, Bagram base. What is your position? So my, my position on Bagram was it linked to my recommendation, my position then and now, that we should have held at 2,500. At 2,500 U.S. forces, if you also assume that will allow the Afghans to stay in the fight, you can maintain a viable base at Bagram. And, and, I and indeed, Bagram, Bagram would be critical. protecting American families. And hey, as we conclude, uh, we still have a president making bad decisions. And that is that we had seven weeks ago, uh, three young Americans were killed, uh, Army reservists from Georgia. And this was a decision of the president, Mr. Biden, who did not follow through on trying to stop these attacks on our troops uh, by the puppets of uh, Iran. And uh, we've lost three service members, over 40 injured. 
And the president needs to take this seriously. We're in a conflict for as existential of our country. Thank you.